Welcome to High Five. Five questions in five minutes about IT security and business. My first guest is Brian Self. Brian is an ethical hacker. So, so welcome, Brian, and tell me, what is an ethical hacker? Well, the first thing that I like to do when people ask me about ethical hacking is I like to break the two words apart. Hacker has gotten a bad connotation. The media, they do what they do, right? And they grabbed a hold of the hacker term. It really meant just someone who was curious. It started with trains years ago at MIT, and you know they were hacking on the train lines, and so it's this curiosity. It's and I have the curiosity. I want to know how things work. I, I want to know why it, when I click here it does this, and ooh, if I click there it does something different. So I, I think that's what really a hacker is. It's a mindset. It's a curiosity. And then the ethical piece. Well, that's where that's where I live. It's doing things with permission. I don't. I'm not the type of security researcher or, or pen tester that goes out and tests other people's sites without permission. There's a number of people in the industry that do that. We can argue if that's a service or not, but I really, I need permission. So the ethical hacker piece for me is that I've been given permission by a company to come in and do whatever kind of testing it is. And that's really where I define it. Um, kind of a being curious with permission. So. Okay. Why, why do companies ask for penetration tests? One of the main reasons is they're testing their security controls. Time and time again, I hear people say, oh, we have this down, we patched everything, we've, we've done everything we need to do within our systems. And I show up on day one and they haven't done even half of what they thought they had done. And a lot of that is just, it, it's the industry too. Things move so fast. I'm not, I'm not blaming anybody. I'm not pointing blame or anything. It's just, that's kind of the reality of it. Uh, even within my own systems, you know, I believe I have everything patched and there's that one box that I forgot about. That's what I'm helping people do. And I'm testing to make sure that what you believe in place is in place, is in place. And it's called assurance. So I'm giving people a level of assurance by the testing. And it could be technical or it could be just policy based too. A lot of people just want to go through their policies. But the pen testing, that's where the, the rubber hits the road. You think that firewall rule is there? Mm -mm, I got right in. Or you believe your passwords are strong? Well, I guess somebody's password, you know, and for the record, any of your listeners, password one is not a good password. <laughs> <laughs> um, do you, in, do you, there's a lot of focus, of course, on, on firewalls and stuff like that, but do you include the service desk and, and the, the human processes in a service desk as part of a penetration test? Every time I can. If I can get it in scope, I want that in scope. It, that's how companies are being attacked now, is through social engineering, through being sent an email via phishing or voice, I mean, voice phishing, which we call vishing. If I can call up somebody and I can get a password, that's a lot easier for me than, than actually doing some sort of technical hack. And most of the people out there that are doing this maliciously are looking for the easiest ways in. So I do want to test that. A lot of companies understand, hey, that's our biggest weakness, let's not even test it, which is kind of sad. I think you need some sort of a basis. Get a metric. How bad did you do to start? So then you can start to improve. So. Well, in looking at service desks, if we take three different service desks and, and score them according to zero is, is very poor and, and 10 is the best you can have, what will characterize their security processes if we take someone with two points, someone with five points, and someone with eight points? What in, now, now you talked about get taking passwords through a vision process. If, if you, what are the differences between those three situations, those three service desks? Well, what I would rate a two at would be, I'm pretty much going to get in. I don't have to keep calling. I don't have to try to get the right person. Every person is the right person for me, the bad guy. So all I have to do is just call up and say, you know, hey, I'm, I need this password and I get it. Two is just the lowest. Five. I see about 50% of the time, you know, sometimes I have to call back because that person's, oh, they, they want me to validate who I am and you know, I'm not quite who I am. So that five is about 50% of the time. The eights, I don't want to test them because those eights are a pain in the butt, to be honest, because they're going to stop me so often and it's going to be so frustrating for me. They're not the low hanging fruit. So immediately they've taken and mitigated an attack vector that is so popular right now. 
those twos are going to be hit, not the eights. And the eights, if I really want in, it's going to take a lot of effort, and I'm going to have to make a lot of calls. So. Um, now you have had a, a, a short look uh, at FastPass new product identity verification client that gives control for the service desk supporters over the process. If a service desk uses this with best practices, what kind of grade would you would you think that, or would you give a uh, service desk for that uh, for a security point? The key word is best practices. And I've really noticed you guys really have things well-defined for best practices too, within the product. The product is very good, it isolates things down. If best practices are followed, easily an eight, and then I'd want to test to see if I could make it higher. I'm, you know, I kind of do more conservative rating, but I, I would see that an eight already, because as you're going through, it's removing that emotional end, that emotional piece. That as somebody's calling me and I'm supporting them, I feel for them. I have empathy. I want to help them, and that's what a help desk is for: is help, right? So <laughs> as these people are helping, they they get emotionally connected, and the IBC, what I what I could tell. It's removing that emotion. It's saying, well, hey, you, you're not at your normal location. So it's doing the geolocation pieces. Hey, you're not at your normal workstation. So it's pointing out a lot of little pieces for validation that's not that's not over challenging, it's not over threatening. So I see it's easy for the call agent to be able to ask these and just establish that as an overall process and remove the emotion out. So I I I have high expectations of the product, to be honest. Thank you, thank you very much, Brian. Um, I, I really enjoyed Cl clear answers. I, I hope the questions were okay too, but I really enjoyed it. So thanks a lot, and I hope our viewers uh, enjoyed it too. See you later, Brian. Thank you very much. High five. <laughs>